Now, back in 2020, in the early stages of the pandemic, here on Sky, I was pointing the finger at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It was that obvious. We showed you publicly available information suggesting the most likely source of the virus was a leak from that lab. And in the Daily Telegraph, The Australian and here on Sky News, Sherry Markson investigated the issue deeply, breaking global exclu exclusives on the origins of the virus. And she published the book later on, What Really Happened in Wuhan, Exploring the Lab Leak Theory. All that we've learned since then has only vindicated Sherry's work. In just the past few days, emails have come to light showing that US scientists who publicly dismissed the lab leak theory privately gave it credence. The lab escape version of this is so frigging likely to have happened, said one of them, because they were already doing this type of work and the molecular data is fully consistent with that scenario. Extraordinary stuff. This was while the US was publicly dissing the theory. This is like the climate gate emails. Now, Sherry Markson has been digging further and she's written a cover piece for this weekend's edition of the Weekend Australian magazine. Inside the Cova cover-up, it's called. I spoke with Sherry about what the incredible, what level of incredible deceit has been involved. It's unbelievable because I remember so clearly when I started reporting on this issue and investigating the Wuhan Institute of Virology and looking at their gain-of-function research, one of the questions that, that confounded me at the time was that scientists kept saying that they were analysing the sequence of SARS-CoV-2, the genetic sequence itself, and that they could tell it was a natural virus. And this was incredibly confusing to me at the time. I now know... Um, after writing my book and doing all the research, that you can't tell from looking at a virus's sequence whether it has been subject to laboratory manipulation or not. Modern techniques do not leave a trace. And so this goes to the heart of these scientists and their discussions in private correspondence, emails and Slack messages, where they were all looking at the very sequence and saying, it looks like the furin cleavage site has been inserted, it looks like it might have been engineered in a laboratory. One of the scientists said, it looks so friggin' likely. Another one discussed the shit show that would eventuate if China was even accused of an accidental lab release. So they had all these reasons not to say that the virus might have come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and there was no reason at all uh, for them to say that it was a conspiracy. Yeah, it's extraordinary. They actually covered up their own scientific evidence. And the point was, this was the official scientists, I suppose, in the US and elsewhere, but you spoke to Dr Nikolai Petrovsky in Adelaide. I interviewed him on Sky a number of times too. Have a look at this. Have a look at what he said. This is more than two years ago. It was perfectly human adapted from the very first instant. And that, of course, raises questions about how that adaptation occurred and we believe that the most likely explanation is the adaptation occurred in a laboratory somewhere and then the virus accidentally was released from there. But you're not interested in the political debate or the theories, you're just examining yeah. the virus scientifically. Why doesn't the global scientific community want to hear this? Look, I, I think that there's a lot more evidence over the last six months of what we might call Chinese uh, influence over a lot of Western science. Uh, Nikolai Petrovsky there. That's incredible, Sherry. He was saying that in 2021. He was pointing out that this looked like the virus had been meddled with or had some human connection even in 2020. So he's a, he's a scientist of great reputation, and he was saying that publicly, yet it's taken all this time for it to come out. Well, that's the thing. The... The first instincts, the first suspicions of world-leading scientists, including Andrew Rambeau, Christian Anderson uh, and Robert Gary and others, were that the virus did look like it might have been subject to laboratory research. They had long Slack messages talking about this. They told Anthony Fauci about this, but then they went and wrote a scientific paper 
uh, published in Nature Medicine called The Proximal Origins of SARS-CoV-2 that said the exact opposite. Exactly. Said, it pushed the wet market theory. They said a laboratory uh, construct was a conspiracy. They said publicly it was crackpot. We now know part of the reason that they said that, and, and I've actually interviewed uh, for this magazine investigation that I've done that's running this Saturday, I've interviewed um, the man who was Anthony Fauci's boss, a very senior health official, and he talks about the the discussions that were happening behind the scenes. He talks about how Anthony Fauci was worried about protecting his own reputation wow. because his agency had been funding gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Well, you've got the magazine there. It's printed. It's going out on the weekend, your investigation yeah. into the cover-up. I can't wait to read the rest of that. But before I let you go, I've got to talk about the reaction of other media to this, especially the ABC. They were dissing all your revelations and were suggesting you'd got a all wrong. Have a look. We also think Markson should have told readers that almost every virus expert had dismissed the lab escape theory. Well, I've looked into this and other journalists have looked into this as well as scientists, and there really is very little evidence. It's on the outer bounds of possibility, but really so unlikely that you could say pretty much, say definitely that it's not the case. But it's not from the lab. Just disgraceful stuff from them. They owe you an apology and they owe and a correction to Australian audiences. I and mean, the, the main issue is that they misled ABC viewers, right? I, I'm, I'm a side part of it. But I think the point is that I was never claiming I knew where this virus came from. All I was doing was investigating the issue, investigating what was happening in Wuhan. I've spoken to frontline Wuhan doctors. I've spoken to whistleblowers. Uh, I've translated hundreds of documents. Um, and, and all I was doing was reporting and examining the issue. And I've never claimed to know where the virus came from. The ABC, in fact, claimed to know where it didn't come did. from. It's extraordinary. After just one month of, of or a few months into the pandemic, they seem to know that it yeah. didn't come from the lab. Extraordinary. Sherry, congratulations again. Look forward to the article. Your reporting you. on this has, been, has led the world, uh, quite honestly. So thanks for joining us again. Thank you, Chris.